I watched about a year ago when uh, he talked about how the illegal migrants are hurting our city and the federal government should pay us and we shouldn't have to take them. And I said, you know what? He'll be indicted within a year. And I was exactly right. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan. And today we got to talk about President Donald Trump responding to the Eric Adams indictment. As you know, Trump is from New York City. He is a New Yorker all the way through and through. And he's been watching what's happening with the city, with the migrant crisis being the biggest thing. Listen, I don't know about you guys, but I think that the migrant crisis is the biggest issue of the election. We got quite a few problems, inflation and whatnot, but that migrant crisis, if we don't get that under control, we're pretty much toast as a country. But he's been watching what's happening with the Roosevelt Hotel being taken over, city resources being cut to pay for the migrants, all of what's happening. And he's also been watching Eric Adams have to deal with it because he's being inundated with these migrants from the federal government because the border's not being shut down, okay? He has his opinion on it. And before I get into it, let me just back up a little bit and tell you what the issue is. I watch the attorney general from SDNY, Damian Williams, talk about the indictment. And ultimately, yes, it's about the travel and whatnot. But what the attorney general is saying is Eric Adams is being paid by the Turkish government by way of trips to Ghana and Europe and places like this. And he says Turkish government actually called him to get a favor done, which was to open a 26 story building that had serious safety issues, despite the warnings of engineers and the fire department and whatnot. That's the allegation. I think that's still kind of petty because we still got 10 for the big guy, Ukraine, Moldova, all kind of Eastern European nations, giving Hunter Biden a bunch of money and giving 10% to Joe Biden. Allegedly, we got Joe Biden on television threatening to withhold $1 billion from Ukraine if they don't fire a prosecutor. And the prosecutor was looking into the company that Hunter worked for. Hunter was smoking crack in the Navy, got discharged, goes to Ukraine, and sits on the board of that company getting paid $50,000 a month to do what? I don't know. Now, before I go any further, let's get to some clips. Of course, I will always link to everything in the box. If you want to see it and hear it without my commentary, if you're on IG, visit a link in the bio, go to the corresponding article on the website. But without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. Uh, I will say this. I watched about a year ago when uh, he talked about how the illegal migrants are hurting our city and the federal government should pay us and we shouldn't have to take them. And I said, you know what? He'll be indicted within a year, and I was exactly right, because that's what we have. We have people that use the Justice Department and the FBI at levels that have never been seen before. So I wish him luck. I don't know anything about what he did, but I told a lot of group, a lot of people, right over there, that group was saying, you know, sir, you were right about that. When they mentioned that, I said, they came in and he, he was pretty strong about it. He said, this is really unfair to make us carry this burden. We shouldn't be doing this. This is New York City. I mean, your parks are loaded up. I just passed recently Madison Avenue, the Roosevelt Hotel. It's like nobody would recognize it. That's Midtown. But he came out very strongly against it. He was right, by the way, because it's ruining our country. He was honest. And I said... He will be indicted within a year, and that's what happened. And I noticed the indictment's very old. It goes back a long time. Well, I had the same thing. They, got, they went way before the statute of limitations. So I wish him well, but I, I said that he will be indicted because he did that. You take a look. That's what they do. These are dirty players. These are bad people. They cheat, and they uh, do anything necessary. These are bad people. And we need an honest Justice Department. We need an honest FBI. And we need it fast. Yeah. Now, this right here is part of the reason why Trump is so loved by many all over the world, because he's identifying how corrupt the government is. And he's trying to make steps to change it. The corrupt government, in my opinion, doesn't like what he's doing. And they are retaliating against him because they want to keep the whole grift, the gravy train rolling, taking our money spending it on themselves, doing whatever they want to do. 
in a little enclave up there in Northern Virginia, Maryland, D.C. Okay, then they want to have control over what we do as a people, over the world, over global politics. They want to do things the way they want to do it. And if you're in the way, it doesn't matter if you got a D or an R or an I or whatever next to your name, then they're going to try to find a way to discredit you, lock you up, or just get you out of the picture. Okay, humiliate you, embarrass you. That's kind of what's going on here. Now, I have one more clip from this same talk. This is Trump talking about his plan to fix the migrant crisis because that's the biggest problem. New York City being inundated. I, I played a video before where Eric Adams previously said we're getting or they were getting 10,000 migrants a month just to New York City. It's unsustainable. He's saying, hey, federal government, can you please shut the border down? Can you please help? And what does he get as a response? A bunch of legal problems and indictments and whatnot that go all the way back to many years ago before he became the mayor. But let's go ahead and check this out. On day one of my new administration, I will stop all migrant flights immediately. They should stop them tonight. She can do that. Just sign one little page saying stop the migrant flights. But she won't do that. They're infecting our country. They're destroying our country. I will shut down all entries through the migrant phone app, something that most of you haven't even heard of, but it's very active and taking in thousands and thousands of people a week. I will end catch and release, and I will restore, remain in Mexico. I'm going to tell Mexico, thank you very much. You're putting it back right away. You're putting it back, and they will do it too when I tell them. I will bring back Title 42. I will send a federal law enforcement large group of people, but a tough group of people, to liberate Aurora, Colorado. The governor of Colorado is petrified of these gangs. These are Venezuelan gangs with equipment better than our military has. Now, let's, let's pause about the whole thing because some are going to say, oh, that's too extreme. Why would you send the military out there? Listen. The border, border security is the federal government's responsibility. That's their job to handle immigration and stuff like this. Okay, that's what they do. They're not just, they're all over the country. ICE is all over the country. So yes, they should be out there to ensure we have safety in our cities. And really the main thing that he can do is just cut off the supply of these people because it keeps growing. It keeps getting worse and worse every single day. It's easier to shut things off and deport rather than just trying to deport without shutting things off. As going in with guns, the go governor of Colorado is a coward. <laughs> He's afraid to do what you have to do. And every other town that has been taken over by the migrant gangs and criminal alien thugs. And I think I'll go to a couple of these towns over the next two weeks. You'll see for yourself what's happened to them. They've been literally destroyed. Let's pause again. Now, some are going to find offense to what he said. Oh, these criminal alien thugs. You think all oh, immigrants are criminals. You hate brown people. No, it's not even about that because we've always had immigrants. What they say, we are a nation of immigrants. We've always had immigrants. We've always had migrants. Some of the illegal aliens. Some of the Hispanics framing houses for $10 an hour, rain, sleet, snow, hail, all of that. They, they've been here. That's not, that's not the source of the problem. The source of the problem is the unfettered illegal immigration, open borders, corporations taking advantage of this undocumented, quote unquote, illegal labor. And then they competing with each other to bring in more and more of the migrants. OK, you're living in a place, you're trying to find a job making fifteen dollars an hour. OK, rather than paying you the fifteen dollars, American citizen, taxpayer, veteran, rather than pay paying you, we're going to bring in a bunch of these undocumented people from some third world country. Were they happy to get $5 in a chicken sandwich and put them in your place? How are you going to compete? How are you as an American citizen who is subject to the rules of this country? Like, I don't know, getting a driver's license, paying taxes for real, like having to help. How are you going to compete with somebody who's just over here to work with no real rights or nothing like that? You can't. I will send Congress a bill to ban sanctuary cities in the first day that I become president. And I will tell you, whether it's California or any place else, you might have guys like the governor, Newscom, or others that are governors wanting it. Nobody knows why. 
but the people don't want them. You can go and ask the people of California, do you want sanctuary cities? The people, including Democrats, will say we don't want them. We will seal the border. We will stop the invasion, and we will begin the largest deportation of criminals, the criminal element, which is a large portion. We will start that immediately. Dwight Eisenhower had the largest deportation effort ever in our country, President Eisenhower, because he hated the fact that people were able to pour across our border. This will be much larger than that, but we will get rid of the drug dealers. We will get rid of the human traffickers. We will get rid of the murderers, the people that came out of jails, and the people that came out of mental institutions. They will all be gone, and it'll happen very quickly. We'll so there we go. Now, some are going to say that's easier said than done, ABL, to deport all these people, but he's able to at least identify the problem. It ain't just about the, what will um, Barack Obama say, the fruit pickers and bait makers. It's not about them. They've been here. That's not even the problem. We're talking about the criminal aliens, the gangs, the the, the traffickers, these bad people who are coming across. I saw that they got some terrorists from the Middle East coming across the southern border. So that is the problem. These people are real people. They're really bad. They're really criminals. Their own country didn't want them many times. They were given to us, donated to us. It's not welcome. The federal government welcomes it because they don't care. As long as they get all these fresh bodies working in the factory for like next to no money, they cool. They take the criminal element too. But what's happening as I close is that the criminal element is impacting regular everyday Americans. The, the, the legal immigrants who came over here to escape that kind of violence and now subject to it. Imagine you escape from Venezuela and the gang life and the gang life come right to you, to your door. And now you're in the same situation that you were in in your country of origin when you legally came to the USA over many years of time and effort. Money, sweat, tears, years, your life sacrifice all to be in the same position again. It's not fair. And I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? What's your take on what Trump said about Eric Adams and the fact that he caught the indictment? Because, hey, man, you're talking about the migrant crisis. Okay, they got you. You can say that what he did warrants an indictment, but if what he did warrants an indictment, then we got to look at everybody in the country because I think, especially when talking about big city mayors, there's dirt on everybody. Look at even the president. Look at the potential VP from Kamala, Tim Waltz, going to China 30 times. I'm sure there's something there. <laughs> I'm sure there's something there. You're talking about Eric Adams going to Turkey and Ghana, what, five, 10 times? But this guy has been to China 30 times, been going for 30 years. You don't see any kind of connection. There's not enough to investigate this guy on, maybe even get him indicted. I'm sure there is. But <laughs> uh, whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. You guys know where I'm at. I think it's lawfare. Yes, there's some dirt on him. Yes, they can, yes, they can prosecute him. But why now? Why after so many years? And why not others who have similar kinds of uh, monies and whatnot? in their background. I'm just asking a few questions, but whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that is all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.